Hi, it's Tatiana. As a reminder, I want to say I'm not a doctor. Part of this process is me uh, coping with my own issues, and hopefully I am providing some type of validation for those of you who have been through um, difficult times as I have. Okay, let's get to the program. Regarding res restraining orders is um, first, my first experience with a restraining order is with the overt um, narcissist uh, that I have a couple of videos about. Um, this person had hit me in the past. Um, it is not the way to control me, so it didn't continue. Um, as I said in, this, in the video about him, um, he punched me once and I punched him back. Uh, he did shove me once across a room. Um, so um, I guess what I would like to say, or my opinion, and this isn't my own opinion, is that if you're considering a restraining order, at the very least, my rule is that if there has been violence or there is a history of violence, even if that person hasn't hit you yet, if there is a history of violence, that is my rule. Get the restraining order. Um, it may not discontinue the violence. It can also, um, police are very concerned when you uh, try to leave or when you get a restraining order, oftentimes that antagonizes the abuser and um, the chance for uh, danger increases. So please keep that in mind. Um, if you do get your restraining order, which again, I do recommend that you get the restraining order, um, you need to wholly protect yourself. If this person is violent, get it and protect yourself. That means changing your phone number, changing where you live. Um, if you can't change where you live immediately, then going somewhere to someone else's home, um, etc. Um, what I was going to say is that um, this particular person had been violent, as I said. He had several weapons, and I've known many people who have weapons. I've, I don't have a problem with um, firearms, um, but this particular person did have firearms and had displayed uncompulsive behavior about those weapons, such as um, showing that weapon to someone else in a threatening manner. Okay, so there's an alert. There are many, many, many gun owners who are very safe with their weapons. They're in safes. Um, they're locked up. They have taken training courses. And the key thing is they don't shove them in people's faces. <laughs> when someone is willing to take a weapon and shove it in someone's face um, for no reason or for their own perceived reasons, that's a dangerous person. Um, so in, in this particular case with that ex-boyfriend, um, he had threatened to kill me on several occasions um, and had threatened my friends, had threatened the people in my church. Um, my pastor did not want me to get a restraining order. Um, and that is something that can happen to you when you want to get a restraining order. Nobody around you wants to support you. And I want to uh, help you pause for a moment if that's what you're going through. Please, please be aware of the fact that if you've been in an abusive relationship, you have not been talking to other people about what's going on. That narcissist probably isolated you quite a while ago. And uh, so most people are not aware of just how bad it is and what your gut is telling you about their potential for violence. So truly listen to your gut. And if you don't know about listening to your gut, then follow the rules. If they have hurt you or they have hurt someone else, get the restraining order and protect yourself. Figure the rest of it out later. Um, number one, protect yourself because the restraining order means any contact with you will allow the police to arrest that person. Before the restraining order, that person can continue to harass you. They can be on your doorstep. They can be on your doorstep with a gun threatening you and then hide that gun and the police are gonna go and say, hey, you know, you had this gun out you know, this person said that, that you were threatening her with a gun and they can't arrest that person. With the restraining order, any, any contact, they can be arrested. Okay, um, so it is the first level of protection against, um, against that potential threat. Um, the 
what I also wanted to say in explaining in detail for this particular restraining order is to keep in mind that they can contest a restraining order. In this case, he did contest that restraining order. Please watch the video uh, about overt narcissist. Um, he, um, I did get my restraining order, and um, and that video will lead you through the details of that. However, they can contest it, and I did have to sit in court. That is part of the process that if they want to contest it, you will have to sit in court and face that person. And that is there for your, uh, just for everyone's protection um, in case someone has been falsely accused. Um, and then lastly, also I wanted to say in that particular instance, that's a different state uh, that was up in the state of, I went in, filled out the restraining order, and the police found him. I didn't know where he lived. Um, and, um, and they served him. So, uh, I, I wanted to pause a moment and also explain that in detail. When you fill out the forms for a restraining order, you file them at the courthouse, they, and they give you a date and they must serve the person. Not have his address, they found him. The second example that I'm about to give you about a restraining order, uh, was in California and I was required to give them an address. In fact, I think, yes, I, I filled out the forms in the morning, filed them, had to wait for them to go through the process. So I was in that courthouse from when it opened until, I don't know, three o'clock in the afternoon. And I would say that if you're, if you got up the guts and strength to go and get that restraining order done, do not leave the courthouse until you are done with the process. So I waited and I got the paperwork on the on the second one. And then they said I had to take that paperwork to the sheriff's department. After getting to the sheriff's department, they told me I needed to have the address of this person who had threatened me. Well, I didn't have their address. They had they were harassing me. Um, and so in the end, that person was never served with that restraining order. But I'll explain that in a moment. So anyway, um, completing that first story, um, Again, to review, if there has been violence or a history of violence with the person, get the restraining order. Get the restraining order. No matter what anybody is saying, get the restraining order. Um, that person might escalate the violence. However, they might escalate the violence without the restraining order, and you will have nothing to protect yourself. So please get the restraining order. Um, and the second story is about an, uh, an ex-boyfriend's ex-baby mama, right? So I've got, this, I've got this chick who's got an issue, um, and without going into all of the details, because it was pretty pathetic, but um, she did anger herself to the point of threatening to kill me. And again, as I said with the uh, previous example, um, if there is violence or a history of violence, there is no question, get the restraining order. I told her, um, I had someone convey to her that I was getting the restraining order. No, and I did. And in in, while she was yelling at me, I told her I would get a restraining order. Um, and so the next day, the next morning, I went to the courthouse and explained that she had threatened to kill me. Not once, but twice. She actually said the words, I will kill you. And thankfully, the courts take that very seriously. So not only was I, um, uh, did I have the paperwork for a restraining order, but because of that physical threat, um, uh, explicit threat, I was awarded what is called in the state of California an emergency protective order. An emergency protective order is an immediate protective order. That meant the moment that I walked out of that courthouse, I was protected. If she came up to me, if she called me, if she called who I had put on the restraining order, if she used that person to contact me, um, in any way whatsoever, if she tried to contact me through email, Facebook, it, it didn't matter. She would be arrested. Um, so again, any threats of violence, any history of violence, especially if they say the words, I'm going to kill you. I want to kill you. I wish you were dead. I, whatever. 
it, it, that is an explicit threat, and thankfully the courts, in, at least here in California, highly respect that and gave me that emergency protective order. So coming back to what I said earlier, however, and I was required to have her address. I did not have her address. Um, and so therefore, they told me to go home and get her address. It was terribly uncomfortable um, to research this person that I, I really wanted nothing to do with um, and to try to find information about her without her knowledge. It's, it, it was a complete reversal. It was very uncomfortable. I was not happy about it. And I, I could not find her address. I did find a address for like her parents. Um, but I could not find her address. And so, um, I went to my court date and I explained that to the judge that I could not obtain her address in order for her to be served. So, um, uh, so in that, in that process, again, I'm, I'm hoping you become aware of what the court process is that I had to go to court, fill out the paperwork because of the type of threat that I was given. I was granted an emergency protective order went to the uh, sheriff's department, was um, denied them accepting my paperwork until I had her address. I attempted to get her address, could not, went to my court date. She's not going to be there because she hasn't been served. However, she knew that I was getting a, a restraining order. If I don't know if she ever did, but she could have easily gone to the courthouse um, uh, records online and you could see that I had a restraining order. Her name is there. That is public record. Um, and that I had been awarded an emergency protective order. So I assume that she took me seriously and, or that she looked county records and saw that she had, she had something against her, even though she hadn't been served and she left me alone. There was never and has never been any contact from her or through anyone else from her to me since I told her I was getting a restraining order. And I think she was well aware of the fact that she had broken the law by threatening to kill me. So anyway, um, however, um, like I said, I went to court. The, the, I went to the court date. She wasn't going to be there. I explained to the judge what was going on, that I couldn't obtain her address, um, and that, um, and then he awarded me a second court date so that I could attempt to get her address more, um, which was a bummer, but nevertheless, I still attempted to get the address, could not get the address, um, without alerting her in some manner or alerting someone she knew. Um, so, you know, I felt kind of uncomfortable. And, um, however, I, I knew that I had the emergency protective order. So, so I could, so I did have some type of protection. However, um, I went to the second court date, explained to the judge, I still have not been able to obtain her, her address for her to be served. And I, I don't know where she works. Um, so the court offered, the judge offered to, uh, I, I believe the term was to dismiss without prejudice. And that particular term meant that the case would be dismissed, meaning I don't, I'm not going to get another court date. However, if she had attempted to contact me or threaten me in any manner whatsoever, I could go back to court and uh, start where I left off. And um, and I appreciated that and left this such. And I, and I had explained to the judge that she has not had any contact with me. And at that point, it had been, I believe, 40 days. Uh, since the emergency protective order and I said and I explained very gratefully that I believe this emergency protective order did what it needed to do which was to the goal discontinue contact with me so um, so even though it didn't go how many of us think it would go it did have the desired results so again here's another example of getting a restraining order and not being granted the restraining order yet it had the results that we wanted and what we do hope I believe 90% of the time is that um, what I believe is that uh, restraining orders do just getting the restraining order does have the desired results. Most of the time people are bullies and you just need to say, I'm not taking that. And, um, and, and I, I'm not going to be physically violent back. I'm not going to engage in drama. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to 
continue um, this dysfunction with this other person. I'm literally just going to go to the law and say, this is not acceptable, and the law will back me up on that. So if you decide to harass me, you will find yourself in jail. Um, and in her case, I believe I had explained yes, because she worked for public school system. And I had said that when, when after she had threatened me. I said, well, I'll be getting a restraining order, and that'll be a very interesting thing for your um, employer to find out that, that you have a restraining order because she, if she does decide to work somewhere else and they have to do, I have been an educator, they will do a background check. And when they do a background check, they will see that there is still as public record that there is an emergency or was an emergency protective order against her. And she will not be able to be employed within the public school system ever again. So that's what you get. Do not threaten to kill somebody and use the law. Use the law. Um, it is there for you and it is there to protect you. Okay, and then um, my third example is not getting a restraining order. Um, I have discussed uh, in depth in the video uh, covert, overt narcissist. Um, <clears throat> this person has not been violent. Um, has no history of violence, um, and personally, the type of harassment that I'm getting is, um, for lack of a better way to say it, in my opinion, the way that I see him is immature. Um, and so what I have is, uh, what I'm still dealing with is, is just a lot of immature ways of trying to get attention. Um, so I, this person has harassed my landlord, um, lot of just a lot of just, just weaselly type behavior, you know, calling my landlord and saying whatever story, this, that, and the other thing really just to find out if I'm still living here. So, um, it, it, and it's just, it's, it is harassment. Um, there was a certain point I, where I did get pissed off about three months um, after the relationship, I was changing the locks on the doors. And at that time I discovered that he had not given his keys to my landlord. So it had been three months that he had keys to my home and, uh, I was pissed. Um, the landlord was utterly shocked. You know, I, I gave him the locks after I replaced the locks and I said, here you go. And, um, I didn't have a key. I, I, I think I had one key to the back door and I, because I always went in the back door, I never thought about it. Um, and so I handed him all the locks and said, Hey, you know, I don't know, maybe you can sell these or something like that, but you know, cause they're in good working order. And he said, well, where are the keys? And I was like, I thought you had the keys. I, I haven't had a key. This is my only key. I have one key. And, uh, so when we both discovered that, that he, had lied to him and told him that he had given the keys to me. Um, I, uh, I didn't say anything, but about a week later, he tried to harass me, sent me a text message and I sent him a text message, just trying to be as succinct as possible. Do not do this. 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 Or I will get a restraining order. Okay. So here we are. It has been, I uh, maybe like six months, I think about, no, no, no. Uh, since then it's been maybe about three or four months since that text message. I mean, and I ended that text message with, if you reply to this text message, I will get a restraining order. Um, and so there's never been a reply. One of those things that I had uh, stated in that text message was one of his games, which was sending mail to my home so, oh, in fact, I think that's what he had done. He had sent mail to my home and was texting me, hey, did you get this package? Would you really just do this one nice thing for me and, and bring it to me? Yeah, right. No, I'm not going to bring you a package. It's a game. You want contact. That's not going to happen. So, um, so here we are. It is now, uh, uh, how long ago? I cannot, it's been almost a year, I think, since it's been a year since we broke up and last week I got a package in the mail with his name on it. And, um, I thought, well, fuck me. You know, I, I tell you what guys, getting a restraining order is a pain in the ass. It is a pain in the ass. 
I jump back to my first experience. Ah, you know, what if he, what if he um, contests it and I'm going to have to see him in court? Um, the other one is, you know, is he capable of violence? You know, do I need this to protect myself? I did tell him I would get a restraining order if he did this. Do I not stand on my word? Okay, so here I am on a decision-making day. On this particular instance, and I'm going to say at this time, I am not going to get a restraining order. However, I am going to print up the paperwork and have it ready to go. And I'll explain why. Number one, coming back to my rule, there is no previous history of violence. He has never been physically violent to me. Um, I believe that all of his narcissistic games are to get attention. One of his games is to be the perpetual victim. At this point, I'm going to say that my gut is telling me that he wants the restraining order opportunity so that he can go in, contest it, and then say what a victim he is. That's what my gut is telling me. Um, the What I did when I did get the package, and I had already gone several months ago. I went to the post office. I know my mailman, in fact. He knows um, that, that this is a game that's been going on. Um, and so I went to the post office and said, hey, you know, it's been, it's, you know, a new year. Do I need to put in a new request? And it turns out there is actually no official request. Apparently when I went in before and saying, I refuse mail, is there any way to refuse mail to be received about this person, uh, in this person's name at my address? Um, they said uh, the last time they were like, oh yeah, sure. Well, really what happened was that they literally just kind of give a note to my mailman saying, hey, if something comes in in this person's name, don't send it. So when I went in the second time, she said, oh, you know what happened is probably your particular mailman had a day off and whoever was his substitute doesn't know to not deliver mail. So then I came back home and I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. If that just slipped through, then how often is, is this happening? And so before I had given them the mail and said, please forward, um, to wherever he lives, um, I had written down, you know, what company had sent it. So I called the company and this is what I call the, the Columbo, uh, version of investigative techniques, which is you call people and you just expect them to be helpful and you don't lie, but you do open the doors for them to share information. So I did not lie to them. But I did open the doors for him to assume whatever he was going to assume. And what he assumed was that this was supposed to be delivered to my home and that um, I don't know where this package went. So I had already written down the UPS tracking information. And so I knew, so I, I have that document showing that this had been delivered intentionally to my address through the UPS tracking. In talking with the guy, or rather in letting the guy talk, um, he explained that for some reason, the, two months ago, the mailing address had been changed. And um, had been changed from where the city that I know he lives in to my address. So I know that he called that company, this is a subscription service, so I know that he called that company and intentionally changed the address from his own home address, which he had been receiving that subscription at for six months, and intentionally changed it to my address. So in fact, he had sent a, a, a package the previous month, and I asked for that tracking number. So now I have the documentation of two packages that were sent to my address. I assume that the first one was intercepted by my mailman because... The UPS tracking actually shows that it was accepted at my city's post office and then returned to him. Okay, so the reason I'm going into detail probably is because I need to vent about it. But secondly is this going through this process, I was able to see that he clearly two months ago, so we're talking two months before I receive this package that upsets me, Two months earlier is when he blurted this game out and preparations for it. So I have the documentation of him sending the 
sending the package, which is a form of harassment for this person. I do have a right to a restraining order. Um, I believe in now I'm in L.A. County. In L.A. County, um, it is called a um, harassment order or stop harassment order, something like that. And I did talk to the police that day, and they advised me that it is harassment. Any type of harassment, you have a right to file a harassment order. So instead of calling it a restraining order, it is called a harassment order. So it doesn't matter, honey, if he's coming and sending you flowers every day saying, please take me back, you can get a harassment order. So um, in this particular case, I'm not going to get it um, because I don't believe that he's violent. And I do believe that part of the game, him clearly knowing that he would get a restraining order put against him is going to put him in the position of being a victim and getting to go to court and declare that he's a victim whatever he wants to do. So at this point, I, like I said, I allowed the person I was talking to to assume quite a bit without me actually saying it. Um, and he, he, but he did ask me, he said, oh, is this supposed to, is it supposed to be going to such and such an address and not that address? I said, yeah. So hopefully the, the package of the subscription has just been returned to his address and the game is done. Um, and he, he can wonder how that happened. I don't really care. Um, but I will have the paperwork ready um, in case something does alert me. At this point, I'm, I'm quite confident that it is a game, and I don't want to participate in that game. And I feel like the restraining order is part of the game. Okay, so um, um, those are my three stories, and I apologize that I'm so long-winded, but like I said, I used to be an educator, so hey, it's a, um, it's a benefit, you know, in that, in that job. So <laughs> anyway, um, if you are considering a restraining order, I hope this is helpful. Um, if you get the restraining order, get your paperwork ahead of time. You go online to whatever county you're in, because you're going to go to your county courthouse, not the county where they live, but the county where you live, um, you will find your find out if it's called a restraining order or a harassment order and print that document out. Um, they can be quite lengthy. If you put as much detail in it as you can, because this is going to be a recorded document. So you, you want that on your side. Use every benefit that you can. Anything that you can record is helpful. Um, the first restraining order, I listed any weapon that I could think of. I listed um, any kind of threat, um, anything that you can put in there. And, and you can add as many sheets as you want. It doesn't matter. You know, it's not like somebody has to type it all up, but it is going to be filed and it will be there. Um, and uh, uh, anything that you can do to protect yourself is what I'm advocating for. Uh, again, um, remember the process get the paperwork, go to the courthouse, bring your ID, bring any information that you can, bring any documentation that you have, um, and uh, file that. Wait for everything to go through before you leave that courthouse. If you're not exactly sure what you're supposed to do, ask. Ask what you need to do. Don't be afraid to ask somebody. Don't be afraid to piss off somebody. This is your safety we're talking about. So, ask someone. If they don't know, ask who you're supposed to ask. And um, leave there confident that you know exactly what your next steps are. Go to your court date. Um, even if that person is not there, even if you, on the opposite end, if you are afraid, go to that court date and complete the process. Um, there's uh, so many people who file restraining orders and don't follow through. If you're going to get it, finish. Um, make sure that you have the time. Take the day off work. Prepare yourself, but get it done. Um, and then, uh, um, and be clear. Write down the clear threats that have been made in in uh, clear detail. Meaning, use the words that they used, um, quotation marks, etc. Get through the process in. The two experiences where I have gotten through the restraining order, um, it did work. Uh, as I explained, overt uh, narcissistic abuser, he's still 
has harassed me. In fact, actually last week when I was dealing with this mail issue, I looked through my Facebook and Facebook filters stuff weird. So anyway, I went through and I actually found a, a, a harassing email from that person and it was sent three years ago. So, so we're talking, you know, like I, I've said in the other video, he has harassed me for 17 years. Um, however, I know that he's not going to, um, physically harm me because he does have on court record that he is a known threat to me. Um, and then the emergency protective order did work. And then in this case, um, my current case, I'm, I'm waiting. Um, and again, um, remember the rules. If there is violence or there's a history of violence, just get the restraining order, whether or not the people around you are supporting you. Okay. Again, I apologize for being so long winded. I just truly hope, hope that this is helpful. And, um, I want to close as I always do, uh, reminding you what the number for the national domestic violence hotline number is. If you need to memorize it, the number is 1-800-799-SAFE, 1-800-799-SAFE, 1-800-799-7233. That is the National Domestic Violence Hotline for the United States. I can see that quite a few of you are viewing from outside of the United States. I'm sorry, I don't know the contact information outside of my country. However, hop on Google. Someone out there cares about you, wants you to be safe, and has resources for you. So in the United States, call that phone number and find out what resources are available in your community. Even though that is a national number, they have the resources for where you can get help exactly where you are. Okay. And, um, I'm just wishing you safety and wisdom in your decision-making process regarding restraining orders. Much love.